Just give a thumbs up or tell us you can hear us so we know everything's good before we uh, get into prayer. So Amen. We heard it. No, I'm talking about people watching. Yeah, we heard it. Yeah, I mean, Once we show you. Yeah, we're, sure. yeah, we're good. We're, we're here good. talking while we're, we're good. not. Yeah, we're That's good. all right. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> we want to see. Amen. I, I want, I'll, well, we just want to welcome everyone who's, this is our first time YouTube live and uh we're Rua International Ministry. I, I'm Pastor Sean, and this is my wife. If she stands up, no one can see her sitting down. No, you got to come up here. This is my wife, Sozie Wiseman. And, um, yeah, it's got, we're in Southwest Florida, and uh, we just want to welcome everyone to the Bible study tonight. And uh, we just want to thank everybody for what God's doing today and what he's been doing. And, uh, I, I'll mention this. The church is getting started. For those who know us already, I just want to mention um, we're going to get carpet put in here. So I already ordered, had the guy come in and he's going to uh, he ordered it. So next week or the week after, we'll probably have carpet laid in here. And then we'll get other things, TVs and all that. So You'll see changes maybe weekly. We'll see what happens. Amen. Amen. But praise God. Uh, we just thank everyone for joining us today. Um, I want to say God's good. I did. I'll, I'll share it us. I don't know if anyone has testimonies. Amen. Because we like to always share the testimony. But I, I'll share this today. A guy came in. And I was at uh, work, and he came in with a, he broke his collarbone, like his shoulder. I mean, I guess it was a uh, fracture. Yeah, that's what they call it. So he was in a, a sling, right? He couldn't even take it out. It just happened. So we were talking and everything, and then I was just, you know, I was just waiting for the opportunity because you just, you know, as you talk, you, you engage people and when the door comes you know you don't want to scare someone away you just engage them show it says he that has friends must show himself friendly right some people are always waiting around for someone else to talk to them but it says he that friend must show himself friendly in proverbs so sometimes people are like well how come i don't have any friends well why don't you go out and start saying hello to somebody you know show yourself friendly amen and then, um, so we ended up uh, speaking to him. And then I asked him what happened, you know, what was the cause of that? And then I just started uh, sharing with them what the Lord was doing and how God healed people. And I shared different things. And then I, he, he was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And I said, well, you know, the Lord in the Bible, there's people that was made, that he made whole. So Maine was sometimes, some of them were crippled as far as their hand was like, you know, folded up or whatever. And when he say straighten out or be made whole, they'll come out, you know, like that. Some they didn't have a hand or whatever part because people had even leprosy back then. They still have leprosy, not as where they have people around us, but there is people in other countries and stuff that have the, the leprosy and that's still you know uncurable to man and um some of them their ears will fall off or nose or whatever and um when the lord would call them he would like the one man because according to the law 
they would have to be cleansed. That's why that leper that came to Jesus, he said, can you thou make me clean? In the book of Matthew, and Jesus said, I will. You know, that's his will for our life. Because God's way, he, he never turned away people who asked for healing, you know? But the thing is, is believing him for it. So some people, just because you don't see him, and I was telling the gentleman, you know, it said that Thomas, after Jesus rose from the dead, he, he didn't really believe. And some of the other ones doubted also. But when Jesus appeared, he called Thomas out. He said, Thomas, he said, yeah, he said, come, touch my hands and my side. And believest thou? And then he came over to him and he just appeared. Now the room he went in in the book of John, when he walked, when Jesus came, he came appeared in the room. All the windows were closed. It says it, the doors. So it wasn't like he walked in. He appeared in the room because he was in a different body now. He wasn't in the regular body. He died and rose again. So in Mark 16, it also talks about he appeared in another form. So there was different things. And with that body, you could go through walls and stuff. So praise God when we get that new body. You know? I might start believing God go through it now. <laughs> but um, what's it called? When he had that new body and he walked through and he, he appeared, and then he told Thomas, touch my hands and touch my side, and he said, believe us thou. And then Thomas came and touched it, and he said, you know, my Lord, my God. You know, people don't catch that, but when he said my Lord, he with the capital L, and he said my God, he wasn't saying my God like people do when something goes on, they're like, oh God, no, -uh. he was calling him my Lord, my God. You know that, and he worshipped, and he wasn't just a man. So when he touched him, he said, "Believest thou now?" He said, I, "I believe." He said, "It's good that you believe, because you saw." But he said, "Blessed are those who haven't seen yet believe." Amen. Amen. So Jesus, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but we don't see him physically. Amen. And, but he'll come day one day back, and every eye is gonna see who they pairs. According to Revelation, Zechariah 14, they talk about who they pierced in the hands and the side, and everyone's pierced them because they met before we were saved. We didn't know, and we were the same people that put him on the cross, but he took the sins of all of us, past, present, and future. Amen. And so he said, it was, he said, Bless are you who haven't seen yet will be. So I told the gentleman, I told him what God did. I said, if you don't mind, can I pray for your shoulder? And he had to go for a, some acting thing, however, do work or whatever, I don't want to give it away. So I prayed, and I started praying, I sensed it. Because as I was praying, I was feeling the bone pop. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. And I, was, I, I told him, you know, the word healing means therapy, which is therapo, therapy, in Greek, which a therapist tells you remove your thing and do something. You haven't did. And I was telling him that he didn't do it, but I know God healed him because I felt it right there. And he goes, man, you must have a gift like that. And I said, no, that's not me. I said, Jesus changed my life because just because you don't see him when you ask him to come in your life, he'll change you from the inside out and he'll make you move again. Amen? Yeah, yeah, because I said the person who I used to be wasn't the why I changed. I wasn't the same who I am now. But when he came to my life, he changed me. I didn't change myself. And uh, I told him, man, he'd do it for everyone. But he he could see and now he knows what how good it tastes to see how good the Lord is, as the word says. Amen. But when we praise God and we thank God. And if anyone who's YouTube live who's new to this, you can also he might put it up on the board, on the on the scene. But if you like to give, you can text to give. I'm saying, you know, anyone, we always have it open. You don't, you don't have to wait for me to give. If you, you want to give whatever you just give, just go. But I'm saying we text to give, and you can also go to our website at www.ghtministry.com. We don't have a very PayPal app yet, but I believe it's going to be posted up on Thank you.
subject today. It's been on my, I've been thinking about it and praying, and I was thought I was going to teach it Sunday, but we're going to talk about angels, and we're going to talk about demons, amen? But I, it's going to take a little bit, but I'm going to start with angels first, just so you know about it, what God says about angels, and you know, where they were, and all these things, and what they do, and why they're with us, and amen. And when I believe because we're always supposed to trust in Jesus, and we don't worship angels or anything. But, you know, some people, they just, it's funny how they're in the, this new age thing, they believe in crystals, angels, they worship them. I'm like, why are you leaving out the Lord? He, they didn't make him, he made them. Amen? I mean, they're just there as servants. Amen? They're there to serve and minister. And just before we get in, we're going to pray. And just so you get an idea from Scripture of what it talks about angels, amen, so we don't get a misconceived idea about them, amen? Because they're here among us, amen? Just because you don't see them, they, they, they take account when things are going on, amen? They watch over things, they watch over us, they're, they're assigned, amen? Just like we're assigned, God assigns them to individuals, He assigns them to places, and, and he's also with us. We, and when you take note of it and understand what they're to do, even on our behalf, amen, it, I believe it will increase you more in your faith, amen, to know really what God has and what's going on in the spirit realm. Because a lot of people don't understand. If they understand how real the spirit realm is, because this earth is temporary, so it's going to pass away. Heaven's eternal and hell's eternal. So those things aren't going to pass. Those things are forever. Amen? I mean, it talks about when it says heaven and earth will pass away. That's talking about the heavens there and this earth. It's going to all fade and then everything's going to be made new again. But heaven in the third heaven, because there's three, the earth, the atmosphere, the universe, and then the spiritual heaven, where it's, uh, as far as according to scriptures, in uh, 2 Corinthians 12, how Paul said that, you know, whether in the body or out of the body, he couldn't tell. But he, he, it was saying that he was caught up into the third heaven. Amen? Some people talk about there's seven of them and all that, because I know they get off and reading other things. I'm just reading the core of the scripture. Amen? I, people can go read outside of it, but I'm telling you from what scripture says. And, uh, but he, he said he was caught in the third heaven. And um, right there is where the Lord is and everything. And just like Stephen, if we look in the Bible, in the book of Acts, it was chapter 7, when he was being stoned to death. <coughs> it said, and we're, I'll just say this for people, we're Bible-believing people because we share out the Word of God. Amen? I'm not even talking something. If I can't show you the Word, you don't have the right to believe it. Amen? But in Acts, it says in chapter 7, when Stephen was being stoned, it said this in verse, actually in verse, uh, in verse uh, 55, I'm just reading this and then we'll get in prayer. But he said, but he, talking about Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, amen, looked up steadfastly into heaven. Now, you know, he was being stoned. And sometimes people say this when they're dying. I even had a friend, he went to heaven and stuff, but he, he even saw, and I've had experiences, but when certain things transpire, there's even people that will be on the hospital bed, and they come out their body, and they can see their body laying there. There's big-time testimonies of people saying that, how they see the doctors working and everything, and my friend testified that he was in the ambulance, and he saw the ambulance driving, and they were going in circles. It took him two hours to get to a place that only took 30 minutes. They didn't even know what they were doing, and uh, they were taking him somewhere. One day I'll have him in there to share his testimony, but uh, he, he could see in him. Well, Paul, Stephen said he looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing on the right hand of God. 
So he was aware of where he what was going on, but he could see in the heaven. And then usually it says the Lord's sitting in his throne. This time he's standing. Why? Wow, Stephen's getting cheered on for being, you know, it says in the book of Psalms, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Amen. Being a martyr. I'm not talking about martyrs with all the religions. They blow themselves up. That ain't a martyr. <laughs> if you got to take other people with you, and you think that's how it goes. That isn't. That, that's reverse of what the Lord says. It says, greater love has no man than this, that a man lays down his life for his friends or his brother. Amen? And that's where you lay down your life for God, being per persecuted for the name of the Lord's sake. And to me, I don't think it's nothing to be afraid of, because if you already know where you're going, there's nothing to be afraid of of dying because you're not going to die. You're going to have eternity with the Lord. So when Stephen was being stoned, he saw the Lord. I believe he never even felt anything because he's looking at the Lord and look at what he says. And behold, he said, behold, I see the heavens open and I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. So right there they threw him out and started stoning him. When he saw the heavens open, he saw the Lord standing there. I knew the Lord probably already knew what was about to transpire before it did. And he already was letting him see his glory. And his glory is actually a covering for us. Amen? And it says right here, and they stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. See, Saul was the one that actually got everyone together to go ahead and kill, you know, stone Stephen to death. And it says, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Isn't that what Jesus said on the cross? He said, it is finished. And then he said, Lord, receive my spirit. You know, and he talked about the given, receive the spirit. And it said, he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Look at that, why they were stoned. And he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And he said this, and what does it say? It doesn't say he died. It said he fell asleep. Because see, God's not a God of the dead. He's a God of the living. That's why when Jesus went to Tabitha, when he said his daughter, where uh, the, the man's daughter died, Jesus said, he said she was sick at the time. By that time Jesus came to the house, she already died, and they had people mourning. She was in a casket. And Jesus said, don't worry, she's not dead, she's asleep. And they all laughed at him to scorn. So he threw them out of the funeral place. He threw them out the house. Because they were doubters and scorners and mockers. And then he kept Peter and them and James with them. And then he told her, he said, Tabitha Kumi, I say, daughter, arise. Talitha Kumi, I say, daughter, arise. And she got out and he said, give her something to eat, you know, to strengthen her. But in, in Christ, you're never dead. Amen? In the world, you die. That's how they look at it. But with him, we're asleep, but we're alive unto the Lord. Because it says to be absent from the body in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 4 is to be present with the Lord. Amen? So when the person so-called, I'll just use a new term, dies, you automatically leave the body and the angels take you and you go right to the Lord. You're with him. So you don't have to worry. But it's the reverse way. When someone dies... And they now know the Lord, and they die, and what happens? Angels, they're not angels, demons come, and they take, he st they start falling. There's plenty of, th and one day we'll teach out in heaven and hell, so you get an understanding of that, amen? Today we'll just talk about angels and go through it, and go through scripture about what it says, and get a few items, you know, so you all can understand, amen? Well, we'll pray, praise God. How's everyone on this thing? Is anyone Texan or whatever? Oh, praise God. Amen. This new thing for us, amen. So we're at YouTube Live again. Yeah.
Praise God. So we'll pray and uh, we'll go before the throne of grace. Amen. Father God, right now we just honor you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, Father God. Your compassions fell not. And we just honor you and thank you. We thank you for your word. Hallelujah, Father God, because your word changed not, Lord. We thank you that your word is able to bring minister healing. It's able to renew our minds, transform our lives, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. As you watch over your word to perform it, as you watch over your word to confirm it. And we thank you, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name for your Holy Spirit that's here among us. You know the hearts and minds and thoughts of the people, and you know what they need, Lord. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, for your sheep, for your people, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We ask you, Lord, right now to minister to your people. We thank you. You have given us the tongue of the learned, that we may know how to speak a word to them that are weary in due season in the name of Jesus. And whatever gifts and manifestations of your Holy Spirit, we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise for it. Thank in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus, we thank you and glorify you. And in Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, just to give you an understanding about angels, the word angels in Hebrew means malach, like malach. And what it means, it, its term is a dispatch as a deputy. It means a messenger. Amen? Just like us, we're messengers of God as well. We're here to bring the good news, the good tidings. Well, they're messengers assigned from God to the people. Amen? It's things to tell them or share with them. Amen? It, it, it's not they're there to preach the gospel to them as far as to preach to be saved. That's our part. Amen? We're ambassadors for Christ. Amen? But they're there to help. And they're there to watch over us and protect us. Amen? And there's a lot of other things else that they do. There's different ones. Amen? We'll talk about that. But it's also, it's specifically of God. It also means as far as a prophet, priest, or teacher, that's what the word angels represent. And it says also ambassador or king. And well, it's not that that's what they are, but actually they're assigned to those people. In, in terms, you gotta know in scripture, because we'll look at scripture, because sometimes it talks about angels, but it really means God. So we don't get it confused, you know, about how they translate it. And I'll show you that scripture. Also, it says in Greek, it means angelos, which means to bring tidings. It means a messenger again. And it also means a pastor. And, you know, in that form. So praise God. We're going to start here in, Revel in Hebrews chapter 1. I'm going to read this because we'll see what angels what they are to us, what they're as those who are saved, amen? And I'll probably read it from another translation so we get, uh, praise God, a little different translation here, amen? Praise the Lord. Go here. Amen. And so, in Hebrews chapter 1, and this is actually, you know, what people want to know who, who is Jesus and what he isn't. Amen? This chapter explains to it because he wasn't made. And he could have came as an angel, but he didn't. Why is that? Because man's the one that fell into sin. Amen? And it had to take a man to bring us out of sin. Amen? It didn't take animals to bring us out. It took another man. Amen? Who had to be at least the form and likeness of us. Praise God. So here it says in Hebrews chapter 1, it says in God who, it says at sun dry times and divers manners, spake in time past, what? Unto the fathers, by who? The prophets. That's the old covenant. Amen? He spoke in time past to our forefathers, 
by the prophets. Amen? And it says, has in these last days right now spoken unto us by who? His son. Talking about Jesus. And it's a capital S there. And he says here, whom he has, talking about God has, appointed heir of all things. Amen? If you're an heir, that means like a son is an heir, so usually they leave that inheritance and they receive what the father or the family leaves to them, right? So an heir is whatever belongs to your family should belong to you unless they're just mean and just saying, I'm not giving none of them some. I've donated all the charity. They can do whatever. <laughs> They're bad. But usually, an heir, someone that's a relative, a son, a, you know, a immediate family, they receive all things. Well, what God do with Jesus? Because he's of him, he's from him. Amen? He is him. Because it says in the beginning, God, or it says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God in John chapter 1. one. It says in the beginning, what? It talks about as far as in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything that was made was made. Amen? There was nothing made that was made without Him, the Word. And so he says, He has appointed what? Heir of all things. What did Jesus say when in Matthew 28? He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen? Everything. Amen? He's over everything. Until that day he comes, he redeems us all, and he goes back into the Father, where everything's back subject to the Father as it was in the beginning. As it says in 1 Corinthians 15. But it says here, by whom also, who's he? Jesus made what? The worlds. Amen? That's the universe. He didn't say world as in one. He said worlds, the planets, everything. Amen? Amen. That's who it was in the beginning. And it says, who being the brightness of his glory, in verse 3, or in other words, the sun reflects the glory of God, and shows exactly what God is like. That's what it's saying. The scripture is saying. And it says he's an express image of his person. That means he's the blueprint. Amen. If you want to see how God is, you look at Jesus. Amen. Now, we, we obviously don't see him in the flesh. But if you want to see the way they had to look, how God is, that's how he is. But how did he come? In our form, we're made in the image and likeness of God. Amen? Amen? Each one of us. Amen? We're not made in the image of an animal. Amen? He made us in the image and likeness of Him. Praise God. I mean, angels do other things, but we have a will. Amen? Watch this. And He upholds all things by what? The word of His power. So the earth, the moon, the sun, all the stars are upheld by his word. Amen? So everyone's wondering, well, if the earth just turned, if you read science and all that, if the earth, earth was off just a centimeter of how it rotates, it could be too hot or it could be too cold. The earth is in the perfect place where God put, put, placed it. Amen? The sun is in the perfect place. The moon, that's why other planets... They're trying to figure out if they can move on Mars. But the earth itself is made for man and woman. Amen? For all this. You don't see other living beings on other, other planets. They can go search or whatever. In the spirit, you might. Because I'm sure there's angels and I'm sure there's d demonic things that are going on. But there's no other places. And then people are thinking... But if they know what God's word said, it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, what he loved, the world. It didn't say he loved all the worlds, that he came to die for everything else in all the worlds. No, it was this world. Amen? Because he made this earth for man to be in here, praise God, and for man to have dominion over everything that he made, as it says. So it says right here, when he had by himself 
purged our sins. So what did he do? He cleansed us from sins. By himself he did it. Amen? He died for us to purge our sins from us. And he said, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And the right hand represents his power, his authority. Amen? Some people, if you don't know, I used to think about the right hand. What is he sitting like right next to him or something? No, it's talking about the right hand. He's sitting within him. Amen? And so it says here, watch this, verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels. So Jesus was being made so much better than the angels as he has, by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, you got the name Gabriel. You got the name Michael. People get real excited about that and all that. Oh, Michael the Archangel. You got some religions, they even pray to the angels. That's not scriptural. Amen? The angels didn't die for us. Amen? Matter of fact, Mary didn't die for us. Now, Mary's highly esteemed. And, but she even had to pray when they went up in the upper room to receive the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? It's nothing against Mary, but we don't need to pray through them because Jesus told us in John, if you read 13, 14, 15, 16, even in verse chapter 16, he talks about you pray to the Father, but now you'll pray in my name and you'll ask what you will. That's what he said. He talked about how you will ask. You haven't asked yet, but now you will ask in my name. Amen? Because he's been given a name above every name. Amen? Even the angels' names. Amen? So we don't get it clear. Some people want to know, what's the angel's name this or that and that? And we'll see in Scripture, it, it's not, it doesn't have to be required to know it. We got a name that's above every name. Amen? And we don't pray to angels, amen. We don't worship angels. The scriptures even will go through there. They're clearly state that. But it says here, verse 5, For unto which of the angels said he at any time? And this is coming from the book of Psalms. Actually, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. In the book of Psalms, it says, Thou art my son, talk about Jesus. He said, this day have I begotten me. Amen. And he said, again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. So that, that's spoken, amen. It talks about that in, I believe, 2 Samuel 7, 14. It talks about being fulfilled. And then it also talks about Psalms 2, verse 7, where he says that. But he even said when Jesus was getting baptized with John, he said, this is my son. Amen? And he'll be glorified. And he also said in the Mount Transfiguration, when they talk about Jesus was with Moses and Elijah, he said, this is my son, hear ye him. Amen? Listen to him, because he's a word. Amen? That dwelt in flesh. So he says right here, and he shall be to me a son, in verse 6, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten, I'll read it from here. It says that when God brings his firstborn son into the world, he says, what? Let all the angels worship him. Amen? Amen. So even the angels worship Jesus. That shows you what level he's at. And it says, and this is what God said about the angels right here. Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire. Now that goes twofold because we're ministers, but we also read that angels are called ministers. And we can see that they are a flame of fire, some of them. And we'll look at that in scripture. As far as, I'll go to one so we can see real quick as we hold our spot here. Go to the book of Kings. Uh, Second Kings. It says here in 2 Kings chapter 6, this was a time of Elijah, amen? It's kind of funny, but we'll read this story. 
It says in verse 8, I'll start there so we can see. In 2 Kings 6, verse 8, it says, Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. Look at this. See, when you're with the Lord, you can get inside information. Ain't no one going to have to tell you. The Lord will tell you what's about to happen. It even says in the book of John, 15 and 16, it talks about 14, 15, and 16, about what the Holy Spirit does. It says one of the scriptures, he'll show us things to come. Amen? Amen. He'll be able to show us what may happen before it happens. And so he said right here, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now the Syrian king was telling him, go down to this place. And here's the man of God telling him, no, don't go down here because this is where they're going. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once nor twice. So he kept doing it all the time. Every time the king would plot, the Syrian king against him, the man of God would get the word of what they're doing and tell the king, and he would escape danger or death. Amen? And therefore the heart of the king of Assyria was sore troubled for this thing. And he said, call his servants and said unto them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? So he was thinking someone's spying or telling on them. Right? That's what the scripture says. He's like, someone's in there telling someone because every time we're going against them they keep finding out what's happening and I, I want to know who's in, in our camp that's telling on us who's for me or against me and one of his servants verse 12 said none my lord O king but Elijah the prophet that is in Israel tell the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in a bed chamber so what, what a person may say in the closet can be spoken in the rooftop. See, nothing's hid from God. Amen? It even says in Scripture, our angels even behold us. And they go back and forth before the Lord to tell what we say. Amen? So they, they're watching everything we do. Amen? They're taking account. Amen? And they go back and forth. And we're going to see in a little bit scripture, I don't know today, we'll go back and forth with that, but it says here, verse 13, and he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him, and it was told, saying, behold, he is in Dothan, there, therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, talking about a big army, you know, he went up against one man, a prophet of Israel, and he brought an army, a host, all horses, chariots against them. <clears throat> and they came by night and could pass the city about. Now, why would you think God would tell him, hey, these people are coming against them, right? I mean, he was telling them what was going on with Israel, but he didn't tell Elijah, this guy is coming for you now. Mm -hmm. Well, if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Nothing comes unseen outside the Lord. So it said right here, And when the servant of the man of God arose early, he got up early, talking about Elijah's servant, he gone forth and behold a whole host, a host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. <clears throat> so you're looking, he said he come past the city, that's like them in compassing four miles. The whole city's full of chariots and horses or military people. So you could look at it today, it'd be like a whole, they are having tanks up in there, helicopters, <coughs> and they're coming for the preacher, amen, the man of God. It takes all these people to get one man. So it says here, and his servant said unto him, Alas, in other words, he was alarmed, he was screaming, My master, what shall we do? 
He's yelling, ah, oh, man, he's looking around. He's like, what should we do? This whole host is here. And Elijah, look at how he responds. In verse 16, he answered and said, fear not. He's in casual about it. It's not even bothering him one bit. He's just like, uh, fear not. You know, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. And he said, for they that be with us, now remember that you should underline it in your Bible or put it in your phone. It says, they that be with us, amen, are what? Are they that be with us are more than they that be with them. You see that? He was saying, they that be with us, even though you can't see them, are more than they that be with them. And what did he say? Elijah said, verse 17, Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Talk about his servant's eyes. This is teaching them something. Amen? He was, he was a servant of Elijah, but Elijah is teaching them something also. He said, open his eyes. And the Lord, oh, that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes of the young man. See, he was a young servant, going to probably be a prophet later, but he hung around Elijah the prophet, amen? Like a, a mentor with a, a student, amen? And what happened? And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire, amen? That was the same ones when Elijah, we can go right back, when Elijah was coming, a chariot of fire came down at first. When we go to a few chapters back, when he came down and Elijah was found, Elijah, and he said he knew he was going to be taken away. And when he did, what ended up happening, a chariot of fire, horses came, those were angels, and took Elijah. And he said, if I leave and my veil comes because he said, what would you want before I leave? He said, I want a double anointing. And uh, he said, if I go, he goes, this is a hard thing you ask, but if I leave in my vest that he was wearing, if it comes off, you know, you receive it, then you'll have what you asked for. And when he was called away, the vest came and fell on him. And he took that vest. And the first miracle he did, he smacked that vest down the River Jordan and the thing split open. And then he crossed it and then all the people were like, they didn't believe Elijah actually left. And they bugged Elijah so much that they made him ashamed. And he said, go search for him if you think he's there. And they searched three days and three nights they couldn't find him. And they knew God called Elijah. They should have known as soon as he smacked the vest down and the whole river opened for him to cross over. That should have been a sign that God's anointing him. And then if you look, he did uh, miracles double throughout his ministry, you know, more than Elijah. And that's one thing we can go over another time. Amen. But it said he saw the chariots of fire and horses about Elijah. And what did he do? Watch this. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord in verse 18 and said, smite this people. He didn't say kill them. He just said what? Smite them with what? I pray you with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. And Elijah said unto him, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I'll bring you to the man whom you seek, but he led them to Samaria. And when he led them to the village, they wanted to kill all the soldiers. But he said, nah, go ahead and give them water and bread to eat, give them food to eat. You know, the word of God tells us to do that to our enemies. It says if your enemy hungers, give them something to eat. If he thirsts, give them something to drink. And then they'll read coals of fire on their head. It, why? Because the enemy, we're not fighting against people. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places. So we're not fighting against a person. So he said, do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. You know, I had an incident today. The guy straight up lied on me. I, I was pretty, I was about to get in the flesh, but I said, no, Lord. 
I, I was kind of upset because the guy straight up lied and you don't call. I was like, no, that ain't even what he even said. But I was like, you know what, Lord, I forgive him. And I, you know, I apologized to the guy and said, yeah, if we, whatever we got to do, we'll take care of it. But he straight up lied like that. But no one, when you give it to the Lord, the Lord will deal with him. Amen. I know we were, it was an incident that we should have took responsibility of what we had, but it was a miscommunication. See, I'm telling on myself, but I'm just saying what to call. But, you know, obviously it's not cool to lie. You know, on a person, if, if you're going to say what you said, be straightforward about it. You know, you don't have to make up a story about, or half the story to say something, to try to get someone in trouble. To me, it wouldn't have mattered. I bless them, praise God. God knows, and he saw the whole situation. So whether they knew I was telling the truth or not, God knows. And that's, to me, that's all that matters. So I was like, I, I forgive them. God bless them. Lord, praise God. <laughs> I'll just bless the name of the Lord. But that, anyways, with this, they fed them. And when they, he said, Lord, open their eyes, that they opened their, and their eyes were open and they saw they were in the enemy's camp. And they that's why they got afraid. They thought they were going to die. But they fed them and told them to go their way. And they sent them back to their home. And they didn't war against them after that, I'm saying, for a while. Amen? So they did good. Amen? That was a little side note right there. Do good to your enemies. Amen? They were, we're not of the world. The world says you overcome evil with evil. Amen? But we don't do, we don't do that. We overcome evil with good. We actually eschew evil and we hold fast to that which is good. That's why, you know, before you get all hot tempered and blown up, pray, give to the Lord thing, and then you react. Amen. Praise God. So back here in Hebrews, we'll, we'll go ahead and keep reading. In verse 8, he says here, I'll wait till everyone gets here. He says, but unto the Son he saith, unto Jesus, in chapter 1 and verse 8 in Hebrews, it says, look at who he says about Jesus, who he is. He says, thy throne, O God. He's talking to Jesus. So he's calling him. That's why it says, the Lord said unto my Lord. Why would he say that? Well, he's talking to himself. The Lord said unto my Lord. Amen. Some of you talk to yourselves. Or, uh, you know, you need to talk to the Lord. But some of you be encouraging yourselves, I hope. But he says... He said, Thy throne, O God, is what? Forever and ever. A scepter or the staff of your righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. It's the power, it's the staff of your kingdom. He said, Thou hast loved righteousness and what? Hated iniquity. Amen? So you love right, what's right in God's sight, but you hate what's wrong in God's sight. Amen? And iniquity is a little different. We were talking about that the other day of what sin is. And it says, Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil of gladness above your fellows. Because Jesus had the spirit, as it says in John chapter 1, without measure. <clears throat> he had this, or it's, yeah, John chapter 1. He said it was without measure. Amen. And he says here, <coughs> excuse me, praise God. It says, they shall perish, or it says, verse 10, he said, and thou, Lord, in the beginning, you have laid what? The foundations of the earth, and, that <coughs> and the heavens are the works of thy hands. Amen? The works of your fingers. They shall perish. But you remain. Amen. You're forever. The works of your hands and what you made, that will perish. But you yourself are going to remain forever. And he says, And they all shall wax old as a garment, and as a vesture shall you fold them up, and they shall be changed. Amen. Everything's going to be changed when he folds everything up, even us. It says in first it says in 1 Corinthians 15, we shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Amen? 
when the Lord returns, we're going to be changed. And as we see him, we'll be as him as he comes. As it says in 1 John chapter 3. It doesn't may not look like it now, but as he appears, we'll be like him when he comes. Unless you pass before he comes, then praise God, you'd be Lord will with the Lord. Amen. And he says here, but thy, and then everything else will change, the heavens and the earth. He said, but thou art the same. Praise God. It says in Malachi chapter 3, the Lord God, he changes not. Amen. That's why his word, you can stand on it. Amen. Other people's opinions, it doesn't matter. If it don't line up with this, you don't have, you don't have to stand with it or stand on it. Amen. But his words tested the time of earth. It's still here. It still remains. Amen. People might want to add to it, put another book to it, or take away from it. No. -uh. There's 66 books here, and it, it has the Alpha and the Omega. It's the first and the last. You go Genesis to Revelation, you'll see how it flows. Amen? And so he says right here, But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. And he says, verse 13, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit thou on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's coming from the book of Psalms. And he said, verse 14, I want you to see this. He said, and all the angels are spirits, or are they not all ministering spirits? There it is, the word ministering, or angel spirits, or ministering serving. That's what they do. They're there to do service. Amen? Service to God and service for you. Amen? And it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. The other translation says, and all the angels are spirits who serve God and are sent to help those who will receive salvation. Another translation, the Amplified, that was in NCV. It says, this is the Amplified, are not, all, are not the angels all ministering spirits, servants sent out in the service of God for the assistance of those who are to inherit what? Salvation. So they're there to serve. Because what they do, as soon as you become saved, it says here, look at this, in Colossians. I want you to see something here. Go to Colossians chapter. <laughs> Says, Thank you, Jesus. It says, it says here. Why is it? I'm looking for one scripture, but it says right here that. He says he has delivered us from, from what? The kingdom of darkness. I believe it's Colossians 1. That's why I'm not going right here. He says he has delivered us in verse 12 and 13. It says, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us met or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who had, who had that's past tense, right? That's what have means. It means past tense. We're going to teach English 101. But it says past tense. Have delivered us already. So when you're in Christ, he delivers you from what? The power of darkness. And what does he do? He had translated us. Teleported us. Or what? Brought us out of what? Darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So as soon as you become saved, physically you're not seeing it. But spiritually, you're been, you have been delivered and cut off from the kingdom of darkness. And you now are, what? Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
That's why you become a new person and you're born again in the spirit. Amen? You may not see it. Your mind may not even really realize it, but your spirit man becomes changed when you accept Jesus in your life. You're born again out of the world of darkness and now brought into the kingdom of his dear son or light. Amen? That's why you're given the light of life, but his angels are there to assist you from that transition. Amen? You become immediately be saved, and they're there because now the power of darkness doesn't have, it doesn't have to belong to you because you're now in his hands and not in the devil's hands anymore. Amen? But they're there to assist people who are, and people know when you become saved. I had times in my life before I was born again that I remember times I could have been dead, but somehow something transpired where I knew it wasn't man. It was something that happened that brought me out of the situation where I could have been dead. And I remember and I reflected that, man, this was the Lord there with me all the time. He said he never leaves us or forsakes us. He's here, present in the earth. He ain't there when we die if we go to hell. He's not there. But here in this presence, his spirit's been poured upon the earth. And when we got people praying for us, the angels assist on that. Amen? I want you to know, when you pray, the angels assist, and we'll look at how they actually are ministers to them who are heirs of salvation. Let's go to the book of Acts. I want you to see something. Acts is the actions of the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's what it is. How God now, because all the gospel, the Old Testament is all the way up to when Jesus died and rose again. After he rose again, that's the New Testament. Amen? So when you look at it and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you're reading all what he's talking about, it's still under the old covenant, but after he died and rose again, that's when the new covenant became. Amen? Because he already separated what was old to make new now. Amen? He defeated death, sin, the devil, all that, and he split the... The, what we talked about, the tabernacle, the curtain, so he's no longer behind that. He's He went to bring and pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen? If we were still under the old covenant, we'd be slaying goats and uh, calves and lambs, and you'd be having to bring an offering every, who knows, some people every day. <laughs> but uh, every year, once for each other, what we ever did, the high priest would do it. But for us, we just go to Jesus. He's the mediator between God and man. And that's the man Christ Jesus because he already spilt his blood for us. Amen? We don't have to bring all that and go between the tabernacle and offer up sacrifices because he's no longer behind the veil. He, he opened up, amen, for everyone to receive him. Praise God. So it says here in the book of Acts, I want you to see something about the angel. It says here in chapter 10, this is about an Italian band named, man named Cornelius. This man isn't saved, but we'll see how angels minister to those who may become saved. Amen? And, and they can show up on there, but they, they'll always lead you, if you don't know the Lord, to be able to get saved. Amen? They're not going to preach, go get saved you know, and tell you that they gave, sent us to do that for them. It says, how can, it says in Romans 10, it talks about, I'll just read that, you don't have to go there, but a lot of us know the scripture, because that's what they always read it on Romans Road, it talks about. But Romans 10, it says, it says, but how shall they call on him in whom they, in verse 14, have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, I is not just talking about someone behind the pulpit. Amen? A preacher is someone to go and share the gospel with people. He said, go into all the world and what? Preach the gospel. He didn't leave it to behind someone who's behind the pulpit. At your job or wherever you're at, that's your pulpit. Amen? At your home, you may be cooking. That's your pulpit for the kids. You're there to help them. Amen? 
God's given you, but wherever you go, you're the preacher maybe for that person. Praise God. So he says, and how shall they preach, in verse 15, except they be sent. Amen? They, they, they're set there. Amen? God may send you to somebody. Praise God. Amen? God, God may have you where they're coming towards your way, but you're there to share the gospel to them. Amen? Tell them about the Lord. And, and as you learn and as you grow, you'll learn how to even be able to share the gospel. It doesn't have to be all a specific way. You go with what you know at that time, and as you grow, you'll be able to learn how to go ahead and share it. Just like you talk to people regularly and tell them and they ask you, how's your family, how's everything going, and you share with them, same way you share about Jesus. I'd be like, man, you won't believe what God done in my life. And you just start sharing. And they'll be telling them, oh, yeah, check out what happened. I did all this crazy stuff. I'll be like, well, let me share a little with you what happened in my life this week. And tell them what Jesus did. Amen? That, that's why you, they, they want to share their story. You can tell them your story. And know how you overcome the enemy by the word of your testimony. Because every one of us who are saved or who knows the Lord has a testimony. Amen? We just don't have the moments. We have the testimony. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah, praise God. So here he says, And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet. Look at that. Of them that preach the gospel of peace. And what? Bring glad tidings of good things. Amen? I'm not bringing sad tidings, bad tidings, giving them, telling them all about the world. Well, sometimes you share a little bit about what's going on, but then you have to bring it around and leave them with a good caption, you know, about what Jesus is doing and forget about all that other stuff. Praise God. You might talk about but you don't have to learn how to steer the conversation. Amen? It's like fishing. Amen? You throw out that line, have that little bait, and you lure them in. Praise God. The devil does, hey, the devil does it saying he leaves a bait to tempt people. To get them to change their direction of where they're going. Amen? It's the same way, God, you can draw people. People going with one conversation, you've got to learn how to steer that conversation. Because you steer with what? The words of your mouth. Amen? Just like you steer your life with your words, you can steer conversations with your words. Amen? Talk about that in James 3, but that's another time. I'm going to read this, and then we'll finish up. It says, there was a certain man in... Caesarea, or Caesarea, called Cornelius, a centurion, in other words, a centurion where he's a captain of a hundred men. Amen? And it says, of the band called the what? Italian band. He was even Jewish. So there he is. He was Italian guy. Probably ate some pizza and some, uh, had some, some, some uh, what's those cannolis and stuff? Amen. So I don't know if they had them back then. But uh, what's it called? He was Italian, brother, right there. And so he says right here, a devout man. Look at this. He wasn't saved, but he says he was a devout man. And in other words, he was dutiful to religion, religious, doing things religiously. Now, position. That doesn't lower your standard when you fear God. That actually brings your standard up higher because you have a high calling in Christ Jesus. Amen? So he said here, he, he, he was devout, religious. He was one that reverenced God. And look how he referenced him. He gave much alms to the people. Look at that. You know what alms is? That's given to the poor. He would give alms to the people. So he had to have money, but he was giving in and helping people. How about that? You see a soldier helping people in the community. And what? And pray to God always. This is a, man, this guy wasn't even saved yet. And Jesus, he had a, he had a heard about him at that time, but he wasn't even saved. He just reverenced the people. He did what the Jews were doing, and he wasn't even a Jew. Do you understand that? Because he, he, he they didn't call it church then. Right then, it was still synagogues. It either was the synagogue or they were out 
Because the way they lived back then in the Roman time, talk about immorality, they had it out in, in the open. It wasn't like today. They had it real, uh, real out in immoral lives back then. So they could have went to Corinthians, Thessalonica, because there they lived real immoral back then. I mean, they, it's not like how today it seems like they're starting to get that way with the internet and everything, and people are getting captions, and they're learning new things, and they're now everyone's talking to things. I, I don't even know the stuff they do anymore. Not that I don't even want to know, but I'm saying it says it's a shame to even to discuss what the things are done in darkness, you know, today. But what they're learning today, it's, it's like it's going back to the Rome, how it used to be. See, there's nothing new under the sun. What's happening, the kingdom of God is increasing, but also the things of the Roman system, the Babylonian system, going the same route. It's all growing together. That's where the wheat and tears will grow together to the fullness of time. The fullness of sin happens. And that's where it will separate the wheat from the tares at that time. So it says here in verse 3, And he saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour. It says of the day. I think that was about 3 o'clock. Ninth hour was uh, 12 o'clock afternoon of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Look at that. He knows his name. So here's an angel coming to him. He sees what's going on and he said, Cornelius. <clears throat> and when he looked at him, he was afraid. <clears throat> now a lot of times when you read in the Bible, when the angels showed up, like in their form, because they could come in different ways now, but when they came in their form, the fear would come over the people. Not a fear of, like, it's demonic, because that's a different fear, but a fear that they do, man, this is, you know, God's glory comes in, and it, it was a fear of being shook. Here he is coming in. And he said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto them, thy prayers and thy alms, your giving, amen, are what? Come up for a memorial before God. That's pretty powerful. When you hear what he says, don't think your prayers aren't heard and don't think your giving's not seen. Because God said in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10, God's not unrighteous or unjust to forget your labor or work that you have shown to the saints in that you minister and you still minister to them. So the people who give and give help to the poor and all those things, God, it doesn't go unnoticed without God. He said it was a memorial before him. A memorial is something that's brought up and it's remembrance before God. Just like Noah, when the door was shut, and Noah was like, man, God must have forgot about me. It's going on 140 days and 40 nights of raining. Then more days, which might have been, I think, 120 days or something like that. And then it said the scripture, as the, he took the dove out, he took a crow, like a, a bird, a fowl of the air, and that thing never came back. It just flies back and forth to and fro. And but then he let the dove out, it came back because it had common sense. And then it went back out again and came back. And what ended up happening, it brought a little olive leaf in his mouth. And then when he let him out the third time, he didn't come back, so he knew it was dry land. And what ended up, the raven that he sent out just left. He's like, I'm gone. And he never even came back. He was probably flying around the waters for who knows how long. But uh, the dove came back and it said, God remembered Noah. And then he opened the door because God sealed the door shut. Noah didn't say God sealed that door shut, just like he brought the animals to Noah. But he sealed it. When God remembered Noah, he opened that door up again for him to leave. Amen. So God doesn't forget the things that you do. Amen. And, and three of the things in Matthews, if you look at it, you know, they go through Matthew 6 and 7. But Matthew 6 talks about, about fasting. That's a whole other thing, fasting, praying, and giving alms. And he said, whatever you do in secret, God will reward you openly for it. 
for. Some people, they boast about everything they do, or how much they give, how much they pray, or, you know, what's it called, how much they fast. No, no, if you do it, you do it unto the Lord. You don't have to do it unto man. Now, if it's a group thing, we all know there's something that we take it up off, and yeah, and we pray and thank God for it. But if it's something you're going to do, you do it to God, and you do it in secret, God will reward you openly. Amen? And it says right here, verse 5, And now send men to Joppa. Here's the angel giving them a message. He sent. And call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Look at how he's giving them this instruction. You know, angels will speak too. We're led by the Holy Spirit. But I'll show you scripture some other time. Angels will speak at times to you. And you need to get heed because there's a difference between when they tell you and when the Holy Spirit leads you. Amen? So he's given a precise, like a word of knowledge, what's present happening right now. And he said right here, he lodges with one sign in the tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He's given him directions, telling him names, directions, where he's at. And he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. So he's telling him that Simon Peter, he's going to tell you what you need to do. And watch this. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and devout soldiers of them that waited on him continually. So this wasn't some guy who was broke and didn't have anyone. This was a man who was in high regard. Plus he had servants, plus he, man, this guy did a lot of things, amen? So you don't get fooled like people who got money and all that, all wicked. No, nah, there's people God has put people in place that honor and reverence God, and they could be even ones in the military too. You can read about even some of the Navy captains. The guy was a Christian that spoke, I've heard him speak before. I don't know if he's still in office, he wrote a book and everything. But there's people in all kinds of places that are, uh, you know, ones that are devout to God about what they do. And right here it says, and when he had, it says, when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. He did just what the angel told him. And on the morrow as they went on their journey, they drew near unto the city, what? Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. So, Right here, he's saying the six hour, I'm sorry, was 12, which was 12 noon, which was the ninth hour, and this was about 3 p.m., the sixth hour. So three hours later, the next day. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while he made ready, he fell into a trance. See, God's about to start showing him something. <clears throat> And, and, that, and the trance is really which, uh, it's a state in which one seems to be as far as insensible to his surroundings. He doesn't know what's going on, and it says, but he's subject to the vision of what he's given. Amen. There's different ones that we, we may talk about one day, open, trance, closed tr vision, and stuff like that. There's different ones, so you get an understanding. And so he says right here, he fell into a trance and he saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him as if in a great sheet knit unto the four corners and led down to the earth, where were all manner of four-footed beasts and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And they came to him in a voice and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And this was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. So three times it was shown to him. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before at the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, which were loud, loud, lodged there, excuse me. While Peter thought on the vision, see, he was given that vision, so now he's thinking on it. And these guys are coming at the same time while he was given the vision. And it says, the Spirit said, 
what unto him, behold, three men seek you. So see, the Holy Spirit spoke to him. The angel spoke to Cornelius, but the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter. And then Peter went down, and he said, Arise therefore and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Because see, Peter was a Jew, and he didn't, the veil he was seeing was all sorts of animals, and he said, I don't eat that, because he kept kosher. He didn't eat unclean things. But the Lord said, Whatever I've given, don't call unclean or common. And he was trying to figure out what this vision was. Now the Holy Spirit told him, Amen. What is that? It's almost done. All right, praise God. And then we'll finish it up. So Peter went down, and he began to speak to Cornelius in verse 21. And he said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause wherefore you are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, is just man, fear of God, and he has good report among all the nations of the Jews. Look at that. He wasn't even a bad man, even among the Jews. And then when he called them, Peter pronounced and said, listen, he said, I, I perceive that God's no respecter of persons. And he began to preach to Cornelius how to be saved. And Cornelius and the whole household got saved and got filled with the Holy Spirit. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit before they even got baptized in water. And the Holy Spirit just fell on them. And they got filled with the Holy Spirit and began prophesying. And then he said, should we forbid any man to be baptized in water? He said, no, let them get baptized. But the angel came there to send them. But he didn't, the angel didn't get them saved. The angel sent him to who he was supposed to hear the word to be saved. Amen? And God will send messages to people. But it could be a message where he'll use you so you'll be able to speak to a person to get them saved. Amen as well. We're going to close it and finish it. And there's a lot more. I, I didn't even get into anything much of what I wanted to get into because we'll talk about next time how angels are on our side to even recover things that belong to us. When I say they go forth to bring things, that I'm telling you, they go forth and they'll recover things that belong to you that the devil's tried to took. And we'll, we'll go over that next time. Amen, Lord willing. Let's pray. If you don't know the Lord today and you want to know the Lord today, amen, we'll be happy to pray for you and with you, amen, because the main thing is getting saved, amen, because that's the real miracle of Jesus in your life, amen. But we'll pray right now and praise God. If you want to receive him, know him, and have him with every head bowed, Every amen, every eye closed, we'll go ahead and pray out, amen. Father, we just thank you and honor you right now. We give you glory, praise, and thanksgiving, Lord. We thank you, Father, hallelujah, because you're a deliverer, you're a healer, amen. You're the one that cleanses and sanctifies us, and we give you praise and honor and glory, Father God. And right now, I just pray in the name of Jesus for that person. They have that pressure on their head, Father God. I rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus. And I command it to loose their head in Jesus' name. I rebuke the spirit of depression off them. And I command them to be loosed and made free in Jesus' mighty name. Because depression and oppression has no authority over thee. In Jesus' name, and I rebuke it, and I command it to go in Jesus' mighty name, because who the Son shall make free is free indeed, in Jesus' holy name, hallelujah. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. If you want to know the Lord, I'll pray with you right now. All you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, right now you say, come into my heart, and I'll receive you in Jesus' mighty name. And he said, the Lord will save you. All you got to do is accept him in your heart, and he will heal you. And right now, I even said someone has a pain on the left side under their rib. If that's you, I don't know if you're here on YouTube, but raise your hand. I want to pray for you. If you have a pain that's underneath your rib, I want to just pray for you in the name of Jesus. And that pain's going to leave in Jesus' name. You might not be feeling it now, but if you have that pain that's been going on right under your rib, I'm going to pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. I will take authority over that spirit of infirmity. I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. I command that pain to leave right under their rib on the left side in the name of Jesus right now. I command it to go. And by Jesus' stripes, you are whole. You are healed right now. In Jesus' name, 
I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. In Jesus' name, that spirit that's been trying to hide under there, I command it to go and loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. And by Jesus' strike, you are whole, you are made healed, and you are well in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And if, they, if this was you, we'd like you to write us. You can share it on Rua, iinternationalministries.com, or you can testify on YouTube here. We'd like to hear from you. And we thank you for joining us this day in Jesus' name, because Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen.